All right, the last part of this section, we are going to talk about the even, even, odd rule. Okay, now this is for variables only. So if we have just a number, then we don't need to worry about this rule. Now the even, the first even, is talking about the root. So if we have an even root of an even power, and we have an odd power for the answer, then we need absolute value symbols. So an example of that, so let's say I was taking the fourth root of x to the fourth, okay? So if I simplify that, I'm just taking four and dividing it by four, so it's gonna be x to the first power. So I have even, even, odd, which means that I'm gonna put this into absolute values. And the reason for that goes back to the idea of the principal root with, with even numbers. So I know that if I'm taking an even root, so a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, eighth root, and so on, I have to have a positive answer. But if I'm just given the answer and asked to, do, and asked to substitute in a number, again, we can pick whatever number we want to substitute into x, so if I pick a negative number, the absolute values force it to be a positive answer. Because if I substitute, so again, that's, that's just an example here. Let's say I substitute in uh, negative 2. So if I go directly to here, I would have something equal to negative 2. But when I look at this, if I'm doing the fourth root of negative 2 to the fourth, so 2 to the fourth is going to be 16. So if I take a negative times itself four times, it becomes a 16. So we know that this situation can't happen. So to help with that, we need the absolute value symbols. And then now we have a true statement. Okay. So again, we need the absolute value symbols. If we have an even root of an even power, and we get an odd power for the answer. So we're just going to go back through the examples that we've already worked through and just check our even, even, odd rule and add in the absolute value signs where needed. All right, so my first variable is here. So again, I have even, even, and even, even though we're not writing it, there's a one, which makes it an odd. So really, this needs to have an absolute value symbol around it. This one, this one, I don't need to check because we're starting with an odd root, so the rule isn't going to apply. All right here, I have an even root, and I have an even power, and I have an odd power for my answer. So the x, and just the x, has to go into absolute value symbol. So on the y, when we look, we have even, even, even. So the rule doesn't apply. So next one, we have a number, don't need to worry about it. Same thing, number nine, we don't need to worry about it. All right, so 10, we have some variables, and we're starting with an even root. So again, we're comparing the original to the answer. So here, we have even, even, odd. So on x, we're going to need an absolute value symbol. On y, we have even, odd, so the rule doesn't apply. And same with z, we have even, odd, so the rule doesn't apply. So the only one I need it for is the x. All right, same with the next one. So this is odd, so the rule is not going to apply. And on 12, so again, we have an even. So it looks like even, 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 so our rule doesn't apply. And even odd, so again, we don't need to worry about the absolute value symbols for that one. And 13, so odd, don't need to worry about it. Okay, next one, so we have even, 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 even. So a rule doesn't apply for that one. And the next one, so we have even, even, odd. So this group is actually going to go into the absolute value symbol since we have an odd power for that answer. And that is going to conclude section four.